let's do some color correction. First, I'm going to delete these two lights that I disabled earlier. And now we need to grab a few things. First, we want to grab in the camera the texture and segmentation. And segmentation is going to be for the person. And now for this to work, we need to add a canvas. So that can be inside of this focal distance as well. And then we'll add a rectangle inside of that. And we want this to render before the mask. So we'll put this above it. And this rectangle we want to fit. So we'll fill width and fill height. And for the material, we'll add a new one. This will be a flat material. Rename it to matte user or body or whatever. And the texture for now, we can just set to the camera texture. And the alpha, we can set to the segmentation. So now you can see here, I have a nice outline cut out. So in theory, we should be able to color correct this, which looks like it's working. Now there's a few ways we could do the color correction here, but first I wanna to try to just desaturate my whole body. So let's open up the patch editor. And we're gonna need this texture from the camera. And there might be different ways to desaturate something, but this is what I figured out. So if we take the RGB and unpack these. So each of these channels is a black and white channel that represents the red, green, and blue channels. And if we grab this user material and grab the texture here, we can preview this. So the X will be the red channel. Okay, and you'll notice as I switch between these channels, it looks like there's still some color coming through. Let's see, it's, it's there's some warmth there and there's some color in here. And that's because we're taking this one channel, which is grayscale, and we're piping it into here. So it's interpreting this as the alpha as well. So if you look up here, you can see it does look black and white, but the background is showing through. So we're getting some color there. I think if I grab this rectangle and just move it, you can see there's the grayscale image that is kind of mostly transparent because it's a lot of dark values. So let's undo that. And in order to make this work, let's add a swizzle. And that way we can take this one value, put it into here, and we can add that to the X, Y, and Z values. And by putting X, 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 that's grabbing this first value. And then for the alpha, we want one. And now you can see a proper black and white channel from the green, the red, and the blue. So to get a balanced black and white, we want to take all of these and add them together. So I'll add an add patch and then add another add patch. So we're taking all three of these and basically just adding them all together using these two patches. And even though we start with three channels, this is now just one channel. So if we add this together, it's going to be a very bright black and white image. And that's because we're basically tripling the brightness of everything. So to make this back to normal, we need to divide by three. That way we're basically taking the average of the sum of these three channels. So dividing by two is close to normal and then three, we should be back to the same luminosity as before. So just with these few little patches, we made a black and white texture. But what if we want a little bit of that color to show through? Well, we can add a mix patch and we want to take this value and mix it with the very original RGBA from this camera texture and then plug that into the diffuse. So now we're at zero, so we're still using this top one. And at one, we're using this camera texture, so we're at full color. So as we click down between the two, we can fade between black and white and full color. So essentially, this is kind of a saturation slider at this point. So at 0.5, 
we're running about half saturation. And I do believe in the AR library, if you look in patch assets under shaders, well, there's a whole bunch now that they've opened it up to everyone, but I think if you scroll all the way down, there's luminance. And this, I think, does a very similar thing where it converts this RGB into a black and white kind of three channel. And you can see the pack here has the X, Y, and Z, and then the one, which is what the swizzle is essentially doing here. And now if we want to color correct to match the kind of the darkness of this, we can add another add patch at the very end here, and we'll change this to vector four. That way we can influence the red, green, blue, and alpha channels independently. So if we plug this in, nothing should happen because we're adding zero. And now to make this darker, we're gonna use negative values. So we're essentially subtracting instead of adding. So just subtracting 0.2 from the red and the blue channels gives us a very bright green value. Yeah, it looks like these values are very delicate. So we need to go in very small increments. And I guess this is maybe not as much green as it is kind of reddish. So instead of having a larger green value, let's have a larger red value. And then to darken it up a little bit more, we can just keep lowering these values until we're at a pretty good overall brightness. It looks like we're getting pretty dark pretty quick, so we need to add some alpha to the edge of this so we can see how it's blending. So in zombie face, we need to, because we're in a physically based material, we need to add alpha into this texture since we can't add it down here. So let's click this little patch dot And we need to grab zombie color. And if we plug that directly in, we need to include the alpha channel as well. We're back to normal. So let's add a pack patch. So we'll pack the red, green, and blue into here. And then for the alpha, let's actually use an SDF. So we'll add a circle SDF. And just to see what we're doing first, let's plug this directly in. And SDFs are super soft, so let's add a step, or a smooth step. So after some tinkering with the smooth step values, I found negative 0.1 and negative 0.3 to be just about the edge here. So with that, I'm gonna use this as the alpha. So I'll drag this into here. So this packs the red, green, and blue with the alpha, and then I'll drag that in here. And you see nothing happens, because if we go back to this material, we need to change it from replace to alpha. That way I'll actually use our alpha channel. Now you can see this blends a lot nicer and now it actually does look a little bit more green relative to what I did over here. So let's increase the green a little bit by decreasing the amount we subtracted, if that made any sense. Oh, and it looks like the color value of this zombie face is kind of a light gray for some reason. So let's change that to white, just to brighten that up a little bit. And already it looks like it's blending pretty nicely with my face. See, that's what I love about filters is you can act a fool and it doesn't matter because you don't even look like yourself. It's like Halloween every day of the year. <laughs> um, okay, where were we? See you next lesson.